Hello everyone, welcome to Tangle with Tracy Ann. It's week two of Inktober and I'll be creating another project using the tangles from days 8 to 14. I'll be again using a piece of mixed media paper, tan, 6 by 8 inches, and a variety of pens and pencils. I'll list these in the description below this video. I've drawn a border one inch wide all the way around except for the bottom which is a half an inch and now I'm just going to put some marks. I'm marking half an inch up from that bottom border and then I'm making another mark two inches from the bottom of that border. So you can see half an inch and then one at two inch. You could just guess these marks if you like and from here on I'm not using a ruler I'm just going to draw a line from one mark across to the other and the same again on that other one and this will be the table that today's plant is going to be sitting on. I'm going to add some lines here so that the table looks like it has a little bit of perspective. So on that bottom section I'm halving it, then halving it again until I have a few sections. Now if you don't want to do this perspective aspect to it, you could draw the tangle as a random tangle. Um, I'm not even sure if this is going to work out. but You can see how the lines are sloping so that it looks like the table is sitting back and showing that perspective. And now I'm going to quickly sketch a bit of a plant pot sitting on this table. I'm going to start by using a micron PN and draw a series of S shapes. That's the start of this tangle. If you decide to do random ones, um, you don't have to do them in a line like this. And it can get tricky when you're doing them in this line because you want to get them opposite when you draw the next line. And See, it's <laughs> I went round the wrong way there. I wouldn't worry too much though. Um, in the long run, it probably you won't notice. It's, it's a little bit difficult too to get these even, so um, I might have some weird things going on later on. <laughs> we'll just see how this works out. Now that I've done the S's, I'm going to join them up so that I draw a line and a little bump to enclose that S a little bit. Just creating a little bump on each one. I'm going to fill the larger gaps with orbs. Once you've drawn the whole pattern, colour in the background. That's why I use the Micron PN, it's a little bit easier for colouring.
Using my graphite pencil, I'm going to shade that bottom half an inch that we marked off right at the beginning. And that will just give the appearance that this tablecloth is hanging down the edge. And once I've done that, I might put a little bit of shadow up near the pot too. So blend that in with your tortillon and add a bit of shading at the top. I didn't really think about which way the light's going, so um, might get rid of that later on. We'll see what happens. I'm going to pencil in some circles just to show where my tangles are going to be drawn. That way I've got a nice even placement. Whoops, uh, went wrong, the wrong way around there. Um, I'll just do it again and ignore it and keep going. As they say, no mistakes in Zentangle, so we'll figure out a solution of how to hide it. I mean, you can't really notice it much already. I'll put in an aura around the edge and that might hide it a little bit. Anyway, moving on, I'll do another one of these and hopefully I won't get it right this time. <laughs> Don't panic when you make mistakes. Just keep on and you'll find some way of disguising it.
I'm going to draw a grid diagonally. Oops, I think I did that the wrong shape. I'm not having a good day today. Because of the pattern, you won't notice that. So I'm going to divide a few of the sections off and then we just fill in the centers of them using these curved shapes. I've shaded the pot so it looks like the light is hitting that front of it so it doesn't make sense to have the shadow of the pot in front of it. So I might get my eraser and just uh, remove that. If the light's hitting the front of the pot then it makes sense that the shadow will be behind the actual pot. I'm just erasing a few of those pencil lines and now put in a bit of graphite behind the pot instead of in front of it.
I'll add some more highlights using a white gel pen. I've just realized I missed a little bit of brown on the pot so I'll fix that up
add some stems so they look like flowers. You could leave this piece as it is, but I have a feeling it looks a little bit dull. So I'm going to add some color. Now it's difficult to add color to tan tiles. So I'm using these Carbothello pastel pencils and I'm just going to add some layers until I'm happy with what colors I have. Use a normal tortillon to smooth these colours out and blend them. Sometimes people ask me the exact colours that I've used in tutorials, but today I've just been grabbing random colours until I'm happy with the results, so I can't tell you exactly what colours I've used. It's often difficult to sharpen these chalky pencils, but in this case, there was a sharpener with the tin of pencils and um, that makes it much easier. I often add other colors that you don't expect in with um, some of the coloring and it just brings out a little bit more depth to the actual color. For example, on that pot, I'm going to add a little bit of yellow, maybe also a little bit of orange. And you'll notice as I go along, colors cropping up where you might not expect them to appear.
these pencils can get a little bit messy so it's a good idea to put a piece of paper under your hand so that you don't smudge the colours. I'm going to try and add a little bit more definition to that pattern and I'm trying this micron green pen but it clogs up quite easily. If you find them clogging up just scribble on a blank piece of paper. I think instead I'll add some uniball eye pen and I have a blue one I don't have a green one I'll see what that will do. These pens glide over any pigment really well. Now you can see they've added some blue, but adding red instead gives a much better shadow in the background. Once you get the colours to how you want them, go and check out that you haven't got any smudges. So erase any, they will uh, come off quite well. In the bigger sections use a nice big eraser. And I find those little mono, Tombow mono erasers really good for the little tricky bits. Use a nice soft paintbrush to just get rid of those crumbs from the eraser. That way you're not smudging the chalk with your hands. I'm going to set mine now with this fixative and I'll leave a link below the video. So take it outside and I give it a spray one way and then go back and spray it again in the other direction. Once this is completely dry, I'll be able to go back in and go over the outlines. So there's this week's Potted Tangles. Thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, do that so that you don't miss out on future videos. Until next week. Stay safe and bye for now. If you'd like to see more of my videos, head over to my YouTube channel or there are a couple of links here on the screen and there's the subscribe button.